All right, so this will be part two. Okay, so what we've done here is we have um, determined how many appointments do we need per year or per month or per week or whatever it breaks down to be um, so that we can hit our financial goals. I'm going to move over here. Um, so then the question becomes, where do we find these people? We find these people by the lead generation model, which you know, we'll, we'll get to that eventually, but I will um, talk just for a moment about that now, is it's going to come from having conversations with human beings and letting them know that you know a lot about real estate and that you would like to help them. So we were using Stephanie's example to say, not only do her clients think of her when they think about um, diet and exercise and overall general health, right? Let's say, for example, like it, it goes a lot deeper than that. Let's say they go to the doctor and they get um, diagnosed with um, diabetes. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that they would probably maybe ask you some questions about that? Sure. Yeah, because you're their health guy, mm -hmm. right? And in order to keep up that reputation, you have to be learning based, right? So if there's like a new hot fad out there, let's say like um, keto, you know a lot of stuff about the keto diet? Mm -hmm. Why? Because I have clients that do it. That's right, right? And do you know a lot about- um, Intermittent fasting specific? Yeah. That's like the newest. Right, that, I'm glad you said that. <clears throat> so all these random things that all these YouTubers are talking about and scientists are talking about, you have to learn about because what would happen if, for example, I was your client and because I have an interest in fitness and because I am looking at YouTube videos and talking to other people that have interest in fit fitness and they say, hey, uh, intermittent fasting is working for me. And I come to you, who's my resource for all things health, and I say, Stephanie, tell me about intermittent fasting. And you're like, uh, what's that? Is there a chance I might quit coming to you for help? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Right. Because the person I look to for health advice better know that stuff. Mm -hmm. I better know more than you. Hell yeah, they better. Mm -hmm. right. book. Like so number one is you have to create the reputation for being the expert, mm -hmm. and you have to become the expert. And you can kind of do those simultaneously, mm -hmm. right? So as you're looking at property in the marketplace, and you're learning what 400 grand in Roswell buys you versus Alpharetta versus Smyrna versus Tucker versus Cumming, and you're, and you're getting passionate about it and you're sharing this stuff, right? Um, people are gonna look to you as the resource. So that, what I mean that might go deep is to say like, Anu, um, I hear you know about real, a bunch about houses and real estate. I got a hole in my roof. Can, do you know somebody that can help me with that? Matter of fact, I do. See what I'm saying? Next thing you know, that person gets a call, the roofer gets a call from your friend George who you just had that conversation with and then the roofer says, oh my gosh, Anu just helped me make 20 grand. Isn't this awesome? I think I'm gonna support Anu now. So where do those listings come from? They come from everywhere. They come from conversations, they come from referrals, they come from prospecting, they come from um, open houses, they come from uh, networking groups, they come from social circles, they come from where your you know, kids that your friends go to, I'm sorry, uh, uh, yeah. schools that, or parents that have kids that go to school with your kids, they come from everywhere. They come from your neighbors, they come from your neighbor's friends, they come from out of state, they come from anywhere. So what I want you guys to focus on is making sure that you are becoming the expert, right? And so for example, let's say I'm your buyer. And let's say, for example, we're looking at condos in Midtown. Okay, and we're driving around, you just showed me one, everything's good. And I say, hey, what's that building? And you're like, I'm not actually sure. Must be new. Uh, no, it looks like it's 25 years old, mm. right? Um, and I'm like, okay, whatever. She probably doesn't know everything about everything. So we go look in another home or two, and, two, and let's say an hour later, I say, hey, Stephanie, what's that building? And you're like, uh, I don't know. I'm like, well, what about that one? Like, well, I don't know. I'm like, wait a second. Who the hell, who are you? How, are you really my realtor? Right? I want somebody that knows what they're doing. So you gotta be thinking about how am I spending my time so that I can keep the reputation that I've earned. Right. I agree. 
Does that make sense? So much changes when you take this seriously. That's exactly Honestly. right. Like once there's a shift in the way you want to do your business, like me being new here from 2016 and not getting into real estate until last year, I really didn't know any of my surroundings except my five mile radius. And yeah. I've sold homes in Ecab and East Cobb and Cherokee and I've had to learn, like really learn. Because right. I've had people say, well, do you know about this neighborhood? Truthfully, no, I don't. I don't want to learn. Yeah, like, hey, um, this one, this is in the tennis community, right? right. Yeah. Right. Can, can we take a little look at uh, some tennis community before right. we go on to the next song? Uh oh. Uh, I gotta go to the bathroom real fast. Uh, where is on Google Maps? The right. tennis community. What road do I have to and take? Melba will tell right. You. That's a good idea. <laughs> going, like going to the bathroom and looking on Google. You before you take I, your I already don't know. Where do these homes? Yeah. You want to make sure, one of the things she said that I never forgot is you want to make sure it doesn't smell like cat pee. You'd be surprised mm -hmm. how many homes with old carpets stink like cat pee. Hey, here's the thing. So, is it is that a possibly still a match for your client? Yes. Right. Yes. Right, right. But you However, want to go so that you can be like, listen, there's a little bit of a smell right now. We can remedy that. If you're really interested and we get into contract, I'll handle that. Right. But if it's not what your client wants, because you've asked them a lot of questions, mm -hmm. yet it appears like it's a match online, yet you know, based on the fact that you have done the research, that it's actually not. Like, let's say the, um, the living room doesn't open up to the kitchen, but it's hard to tell in the pictures, but they've been really adamant about the fact that they need that to open to each other, and you bring them into a home that it's not open to each other, what are you telling them? I you're telling them one of two things. Either you're not, you weren't listening in the first place, mm -hmm. or you don't value their time. For your own, right? So, as a new agent, most of us are new agents here. Um, you, your reputation is on the line all the time, right? You work in Roswell, you work in North Fulton. If I were to say, "Hey, meet me at the Avalon," and you're like, "What's the Avalon?" I'm like, mm -hmm. "You're fired." Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Seriously, like you're you're. I always had that attitude of like, "You're my guy until you screw up, and then we're not going to talk ever again." Clear. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'll give you two examples. One of the very first homes I ever helped a buyer buy is a condo down in Decatur. And this is back in 2006 or 2007. And so, like, we were negotiating things that you guys probably wouldn't be negotiating now. Things like, okay, well, um, the maid's going to come over here and I'm going to give you $45. Mm -hmm. We're going to negotiate a $45 cleaning budget. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, I didn't have a, a whole lot of relationships back then. So, I went to the other agent and I said, hey, do you have a maid? which probably wasn't all that strategic in hindsight because then they knew I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Um, however, they gave me their maid. So I met the maid down there and I said to the maid, I said, look, I got $45, okay? My buyer is particularly concerned about that spot that's really gross and sticky and that spot. I said, so um, I'd like for you to clean those two spots and I'm gonna give you $45 when you're done and I want you to Clean that, clean that, and then once you feel like you've earned $45, I want you to pack up and go. So she cleans the whole place top to bottom. Nice. We're still working together 15 years later. Mm -hmm. Okay. That day I also met a carpet cleaner. Okay. And the carpet cleaner comes in, and I got a budget for the carpet cleaner. And in my opinion, he did a mediocre at best job. We haven't talked since. Now, how many dollars do you think the maids? made from our relationship mm -hmm. been involved in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of real estate contracts mm -hmm. right and I've got hundreds and hundreds of people that I would gladly shout her name out to and she's made thousands of dollars from our relationship mm -hmm. how much does the carpet cleaner make from our relationship 100 bucks make sense mm -hmm. yeah. that's that's the power you see what I'm saying I used to have a carpet guy um, who ultimately um, towed the line on what he should and should not have done and then he crossed the line and we don't, we don't talk anymore but he got to the point where like he would go into somebody's house and he'd be called over there to give like a carpet estimate or a tile estimate or a carpet floor estimate or something like that and he'd ask the question so what you doing this for and they would say oh I'm prepping the home for sale or oh my um, you know we're, we're getting new renters or something right and he'd look at him in the face and be like, Charles, dude, I'm serious about this. Don't you make a real estate decision without talking to my friend Bill. Are you clear? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I'm dead serious. Don't make a real estate decision without calling him first. And you, and you understand? You see what I'm saying? 
That's a lot more powerful than hand them a business card and say, hey, that's a nice guy, right? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna teach people how to help you build your business. Mm -hmm. And in turn, you'll ask them the question, hey, Stephanie, I hear you're in, you're in a personal training. Who's the ideal client you're looking for? Because I work with people all day long. And there's a good chance that I'll come across somebody that might be able to be a benefit for you and your business. So tell me a little bit about that ideal client. What should I look for? What questions should I ask? Mm -hmm. Are you more likely to help me build my real estate business if I'm prioritizing your business that way? Yeah. Be smart, guys. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. They're everywhere. Yeah, yeah. They're <laughs> everywhere. Creative business plan, yeah. It's not even be creative. You just got to be active, mm -hmm. right? get into relationship with people. Mm -hmm. If you ask people enough questions, they're gonna start complaining about something. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I learned this in, in, when I was doing a lot of recruiting, right? Because if you ask a real estate agent how their business is, it's not gonna be long before they complain about something, believe me. And their complaints are generally gonna be in one of two arenas. I either do not have enough leads, and certainly Keller Williams can fix that, or I have too many leads meaning I'm overworked and I have a lot of opportunity, yet I don't have a lot of time. Is Keller Williams, did we write the book on that? Mm -hmm. And we also wrote the book on this? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can, we can fix all your problems. Just come in and meet with me one-on-one. -on -one. Close the door, say, all right, how can I help you? What hurts? Your arm hurt, go to this class. Your leg hurt, go to that class. Your head hurt, go to that class. And sign here. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So in the this video.